Well, it's that time again. A new Thomas Bergerson album. And it was released on Valentine's Day after all. Well, sort of. Until this happened. And this. At last, six months after Chapter 2, we are presented with Humanity Chapter 3, which is all about love. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that Thomas hasn't made an album entirely themed around love up to this point. Sorry, Miracles, Lost in Las Vegas kind of, kind of throws it off. But he's certainly written a lot of love tracks in the past, like these ones, which I'll add later. And, well, I have a confession to make. I listened to the Love Sweet single. This is where I usually listen to music. A little like the piano at the start of Stay, but more heavenly. Kind of Christmassy. Lush. Got a really nice Hollywood quality to it. There it is. Hmm. This is much more what I expected from Chapter 2. The simplicity, the tenderness, the pretty much straightforward orchestral kind of stuff. That was not seven and a half minutes. Will this melody from the end of Vaporize return? Is there going to be an unexpected electronica freakout on this album? And will this sound return? You know, it is what it is. I just thought I'd bring it up. I, al I already recognize this melody. I was not expecting a choral piece to open this one. Just because of the title, Sparks didn't sound like Eleutheria or anything. Although this may not end up being a very choral piece. That is dreamy. That's well, kinda cute. Yeah, I wouldn't often use a term like adorable to describe Thomas's music, but it's kind of what I'm feeling right now. This is really pretty. I wonder if that melody is like the crystallize of this album, the main theme. Red. I have a confession to make. I also listened to this one in advance. But my initial thoughts were along the lines of, oh, that's a nice melody. Immediately hummable. Something I tend to like in music. Doo doo doo. It would fit in pretty nicely on Sun, on Miracles. Signature Thomas. Next up is First Kiss. And I've got to say, mine was a disaster, but I doubt this track will be, so let's listen up. First Kiss is probably as the night winds down. You can hear it, that furtiveness, that little bit of hesitancy, kind of hoping it goes that way. There it is. Must be some kiss! Yeah, I'm picturing a couple in the moonlight under a tree, some fond smiles, a little giddiness after the kiss holding hands and saying, I had a really nice night. We should do this again. A lot of gentle piano on this album. I like that. I don't often have a lot of imagery in my mind while listening to Thomas's music. This one's generating a little more of that. Wow, this barely sounds like Thomas. This is nice. So I think this is going through kind of a typical day, going through your routines, but thinking about your lover and, you know, maybe sending some text messages and just being uplifted through the day. A very bouncy, giddy day. Like your head is just spinning. I don't know if it's cold in here, but I got chills at the end of that. <laughs> this is definitely the most cohesive chapter so far. These tracks, you barely notice that a new track has started and you've got that theme seemingly threaded throughout. Okay, so maybe English vocals in this one, given the title? Is it gonna go full-on pop? Doesn't sound that way so far, but who knows. Okay, electro drum beat. Let's hear some vocals. Yep, that's pop! Whoa. Can't really make out what she's saying, but it's an interesting sound. I think Thomas is duetting a little. Oh, I hope there's more of that. No, that's it. Oh, well, that was fun though. So I don't know if there's a, an engagement or a wedding involved, but maybe that last one was it. Maybe that was the reception party. As a videographer, I've been to my fair share of those. Definitely magic would be a lot more pleasant than the stuff they actually play. There's another little bit from the Love Suite. So now for a new version of Little Star. 
Sounds about the same so far. I remember first listening to this one at like 2 a.m. on a couch. I was gonna wait to listen to it after a road trip, but just couldn't sleep, couldn't resist. That was different. Cut out a little chunk. Not as different as I was expecting. Ooh. Extended bit. Little star shining. Choir singing something. Now, Little Star, originally to Thomas, represented remembrance and commemoration for people who have died. And that same idea of the stars looking down being like loved ones looking down, it's also there in Seven with the stars are you and me. I wonder if it still has that meaning here. Maybe it's mourning a familial loved one with the romantic partner in this story. Growing old together already? Those decades just flew by. This track and the next two, we're gonna be lurching into heartache. There's that slight undercurrent of sadness. Beautiful, something comforting, but it's finite. And I just got chills again. Ooh. That was a little ominous. In a little cottage, coffee in the morning, armchair, photos on the walls from the decades. Sounds almost heroic. Love prevailing. Commitment. Was that death? Just stopped suddenly. Hmm. Yeah, if Little Star was mourning a, a parent. And this one is mourning. And then it takes us back to the beginning. Okay. Yeah, I think this works pretty well in, in the context of the album. The love suite is all in remembrance of the deceased lover. Hmm. All right, this may be another vocal tr- Let's roll uh, A total pop track, okay. I feel like this is the end credits roll now. Can this catch on? Because I feel like this could be a gateway track for a certain audience to get into Thomas's music. I'm gonna have to listen to this while doing dishes, because I have wonderful memories of listening to Imagine while doing dishes a couple years ago. You are the sun. You're the star in the night sky, little star. You're the what in my eye? Very nice. Okay, sun shower, whatever that means. Okay, Thomas was not lying about it being similar to Return to Center so far. Not quite as ethereal. This has all been from the perspective of one couple, but this track and maybe the last one are kind of broadening the scope a little bit. This is love in general. It's like we're zooming out now and here's all the other lives worth living, so to speak. A little horn solo from Thomas. Do, 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 do. For those of you who are familiar with this, I just couldn't help but picturing. Here we go. A very circuitous route to whatever climax we're heading toward, which I'm expecting will be massive. Thomas should do more horn solos. Is there a little vocal element? Is that a synth? Interesting. Starting to sound pretty big. Still building. Nope, still, <laughs> okay. 
It's playing with us, telling us this is gonna go big. Keeps pulling it away when we're anticipating it. Tricky. Kind of picturing a slow motion montage going around the world and seeing lots of loving acts of random kindness and sweet moments between lovers. I always pictured Return to Sender suggesting something like, after the first half... There we go. It was kind of abrupt when it actually finally happened. Simple, recognizable melody. Like I was saying, I've always pictured Return to Sender's second half as kind of like zooming out from the one individual's life and we're seeing kind of their legacy. Everything they did, all the people they whose lives they touched. This is like love's legacy. It's what it means to me. Okay, I want a lot more than that. After all that waiting and build up, that was short. All right, well, it's been a few days since Chapter 3 released. I'm still getting used to the album. It's actually got some tracks that I find not especially memorable, that don't really stand out to me that much, uh, which is very unusual for Thomas's music. So it's just a different kind of album. It's really, really, really meant to be listened straight through, rather than individual tracks, more so than most of Thomas's work. More so, I'd say, even than seven. So an upside to the lengthy delays between all these chapters is I get to associate each one of them with a different season. I definitely think of going on a road trip and blasting the Beautiful People EDM mashup during the summer with chapter one. I really came to associate walking through this area in the winter with chapter two, especially that opening of the stars are coming home when everything looks a little bleak and desolate. It's a very contemplative place. So I'm definitely hoping to also associate chapter three with sunshine and summer and all that. One thing that's really surprised me so far is that uh, the track Sun Shower has grown on me so much since my initial listening that it's now, I think, easily my favorite from the album. And that's very different from what I made of it the first time I listened. I was a little disarmed by it, but now that I'm a little more familiar with the structure of it, I'm enjoying it a lot more, and that climax is really incredible. Thomas has made some comments on Facebook about that piece, and I'm actually more perplexed by it than I was the first time I listened to it as a result. Really no idea what it was meant to be about, but I'm very curious to learn. And until the lights go out, that's a really good one there. Really poignant. I think you could basically insert it as the second to last track on any of Thomas's albums and it would automatically be better. <laughs> I kind of wish it were on seven between Wither All Life and Love and Return to Sender. Just, just for a little emotional punch. I also want to give a shout out to Navi, who is the creator and administrator of the TSFH fan base. She's done more for this community, I think, than anyone, and it's thanks to her that I'm the proud owner of this Skyworld t-shirt. She does contests and giveaways and just really supports people a lot, so credit where credit is due. I also figured now might be a good time to mention that I've put together a fairly comprehensive, uh, nearly four hour compilation of really obscure Thomas Bergerson material that mostly predates the formation of Two Steps From Hell. Demos and production music and random things he posted on blogs years ago that he probably doesn't want anyone to ever find, but <laughs> I've compiled it for those select few who are really interested to see what what he was doing as far back as the 90s when he was a teenager. Fair warning, he's become a much better composer over the years, but it's still really fascinating just to see how far he's come. So even though the delays meant kind of long wait, I do wish Thomas hadn't tried to tide us over with singles. I think that was for the best for most people, 
but for me, I do feel it impacted the album listening experience a bit, and I get to Love Suite, which is really the culmination of a bunch of themes that have been developed throughout the album, and I just think, oh, here's that piece that I'm already really familiar with, and it doesn't feel like it belongs, even though it's pretty much the linchpin of the whole album. <laughs> anyway, I've obviously had a pretty spotty track record with my release date predictions so far, but boy, it would be really great to have Chapter 4 out this summer. <laughs> you know, maybe July? So since I've said that, it's probably gonna come out in November. In the meantime, I hope everyone enjoys the new album. Humanity already feels like a really massive series, and we're not even halfway through yet. So, bravo, Thomas. All right, I'm gonna go listen to it more, bye.